is mouthing this today and saying that something else tomorrow. But the people, the same way the people have held very tenaciously in their hearts to the free education of Abafemi Aulawa. Bishop Adibu was, was here a while back talking about good things in glowing terms about uh, Chief Abafemi Aulawa. The same endearing things, the values that endeared and are still endeared Aulawa to, to the people till today are the things that will come to the table and will bring them to the fore mm. at this election. So for, for as a campaign organization, that's our inclination and that's our proclivity. But okay. we'll move on from there. You will expect that other, 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 um, other contenders also will be inclined to let to steer their campaigns in that direction. And so we can play by the rules. That's number one. Number two, you go to all the institutions of state that would have roles to play in this. We'll expect that we'll, they will not be complicit. And it, you see, this is an election, but it mirrors what's going to happen to Nigeria in 2015. Make no mistakes about it. The highs of the world will start spotlighting Nigeria from Ekiti. And there's no let, and I hope President Jonathan and his minders will also put this to the, will also address their minds the fact that it is not a battle for sovereignty. It is just that it should respect, by all chance, it should respect the wishes of Ekiti people to choose who leads them. And so we don't expect unnecessary, unnecessary attention from anywhere else. And that will take us to the electoral body being actually prepared. And I have my worries. About two months ago, or a month and a half ago, we had this stakeholder engagement session with um, Professor Jega. And it was very professorial, aseptic as usual. And you almost want to give him the benefit of the doubt. Of course, he apologized and then soft spoken and all of that. And the guy who made the presentation about um, the need to start collecting our permanent voters card did a wonderful presentation. He told us about how they cleaned up the figures. We now have 649,000 people and all of that. And that if we wanted to collect our PVCs on that day, that they were ready. The following day, we went, we, we went, to, our polling unit, we went to our polling units to collect, voters, to collect our permanent voters cards issues. Soon after that, the guys who have only, the registrants have only just turned 18 between the last election and now. And next said, register. come and register. And then I next ruled for, his, for a state that has 2,195 polling units. I next barely managed to provide less than 400 uh, DDM machines. In my, in my polling unit, for instance, my polling, you no, know, my ward, for instance, in my ward, for instance, they sent in my first day, day one, I next managed to, 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 to register 15 people. And then there were 75 others on the road. And then the direct consequence of that is that you will put these guys in jeopardy, their lives in jeopardy for the next four years because they won't have a choice and a chance to be a part of the process of who leads them and consolidates on the good works of John Cardiff. Hmm. You understand? Okay. And yeah. you see, this election is not, is not something that we need to... to we can't over, over talk about it. We can, we can continue to distill the details of it. Because the consequences of allowing Ekiti and the governors of that state to slip into shaky, unsteady hands is grim. Okay. All you right, will we... need to validate that. You will need to ask the 25,000 senior citizens. who You see, it's not an isolation. That's not a destination. It's a social safety net initiative. It's a matrix that ensures that zero to five, the vulnerable ages are taken care of in a blanket format. Okay. So don't isolate 5,000 stipend right. to 25,000 people. Okay, no. thank you. Um, we have to wrap up now. Final point to raise with you will be the issue of the volatility of the state. Do you feel that the state is ready for this election? Because we're looking at the number of days left. Well, uh, we the, can say two months. Well, two months the, the, the state is almost ready for the election in the sense that INEC assured them and assured the nation that they are ready for the election. And we believe INEC because I personally believe and I participated in INEC elections in Lagos State that INEC will not go into an election without being ready. That one is for sure. The only problem I envisage 
is the political parties, how they play it in a kitty state. We know for sure that if any attempt is made to rig election in a kitty state, the people, I know their character and their, their antecedents, they will not take it lying low. And you. therefore, the federal government should make available all, I will say, police resources, even military resources, it should have to be a, a backup to make sure that the election is conducted properly and supervised properly and there uh, no slip up. Because if there's any slip up, the Ekiti people will react. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, your final word, you have only 20 seconds. Well, uh, <laughs> well I, 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 honestly, we have to close now. I honestly wish I, I had more time to be able to, do, to, to, to talk about Five this. seconds gone. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, um, the Ekitis have decided the independents are maybe between 10 and 15 percent of the demography. Ekitis have decided. And they have decided not only to keep this man. Who has come to know? Well, we were, uh, before okay. the election, yeah, before they the no, 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 no. Let me tell you. Let yeah. me tell you why. Uh -uh. If a man, okay, fine, the twenty-five thousand senior citizens who have been on that stipend for two and a half years, haven't they made up their mind? Okay, your twenty seconds is over. Thank you the very 10, much, Congressman. Have made up their minds? <laughs> Bimbala, and then the mothers Daramala. of these children, and they not made their minds. <laughs> okay. so, Right. Representing a right. okay. North Federal Constituency, thank you very much. And also Dr. Daniel Logbenla, Associate Professor of Political Science, University of Lagos. Thank, thank you, you very, very much, much, sir. Thank you. So you. that is it, wrapping up the segment. But just as we're wrapping it up, I just want to say that the Nigeria Economic Summit has come and it has ended in Abuja with focus on education. We now join our business correspondent, Chimezie Obiwagu, on our focus on the economy segment of this program today. The 20th edition of the Nigerian Economic Summit has ended in Abuja with a call for all hands to be on deck towards making the education sector work better for the growth of the economy and sustainable development. And with the theme, transforming education through partnerships for global competitiveness, both the public and private sector players are required to intervene in this sector if it is to fulfill its function on preparing Nigeria to compete in the global economy. It's an annual event, but this time attention is being drawn to the education sector, which is said to hold the key to national development and Nigeria's ability to compete in the global economy. This summit on education will achieve three things. The first is to draw everyone's attention to the fact that we do have a problem and to understand the nature of that problem. The second is to consider our capacity and ability to, have, to effect the necessary changes based on the magnitude of what needs to be done. And the third is to devise a structure that will ensure sustainability of an improving educational system. Session after session, stakeholders made their contributions on the way forward for the sector. But what remains an issue is policy inconsistency, which Dr. Obiez Ekwesili, who was once the Minister of Education, acknowledges was her major challenge. It was during my time that we put uh, the uh, policy on early child care education. We worked on uh, the issues of uh, you know, bringing the teacher to the center uh, to have the kind of autonomy and the kind of power and the prestige. Now, all of those programs could have been continued. Um, if they have not been continued, it's a, uh, frankly, I consider it a disservice uh, you know, to the greater population. While these deliberations are on, some of the students present also have their own expectations. I expect that after this summit, we will have lots of teacher empowerment schemes around everywhere already to help our teachers acquire great teaching skills that enable us to call them real, really qualified teachers. Because if we have qualified teachers, then we won't take our teachers for granted and we'll admire them the way we admire foreigners. I think that major schools in the country should be well equipped with well facilities, good facilities in terms of having good access to internet facilities and getting students having free access to this affordable facility. Nigeria's education sector may be in dire straits, 
But many, including international observers, 